Hello, everyone, and welcome back to The Laugh Daily Podcast. Today, I am especially excited about this episode. I know you are as well, Andrew. <laughs> Why so? Because we're going behind here. Keep door closed. This, in the warehouse, is the set for our very own movie. If you guys haven't been following along, we've been promoting it in our main channel YouTube videos, promoting it on Instagram. We are still in production of the set, and our team has been working on this for months. Our first very own movie. So we're gonna go on a behind the scenes tour of the entire set. There's a, you know, like Justin said, they're still building parts of it. So we can stop in, ask them some questions and give you guys the behind the scenes and whatever questions you have about. I know you can't ask us the questions, but we just have to think of what questions you wanna ask and we'll tell you. Yeah, so uh, the movie, what you're about to see is like we said, the entire set. This is a sci-fi comedy adventure. I think that's the best way to describe it. Would you say, Andrew? Yeah. It's an adventure comedy set in space. So <laughs> the spaceship is what we're about to enter. Come on inside. We'll give you guys a tour. If you've been following us on Instagram, you've probably seen bits and pieces, but today you're gonna get the full experience. So this will hopefully make you as excited as we are. So. We've done many builds in this warehouse. Um, from the outside of the set, it doesn't look like much, but look, it takes up the entirety of our warehouse. Speaking of that, I think we should start upstairs. That way you get to see the entirety of what's going on. That's a great idea. So as we go up the stairs, you'll notice this is a very unique staircase. Samuel actually welded this together and made it himself. <laughs> So we'll ask him about that. We have Blake, Samuel, Reese, and Jackson who have been working on this for months. We'll get an exact time frame for you guys to just see how long it's taken to get to this point. But let's go upstairs. Watch your head. Okay. Pretty tight space. I think a lot of you guys will really enjoy seeing it from a top-down view, especially those of you who love anything to do with film, like Andrew and myself. You'll get to see kind of how we've made it possible the set. Yes, it is massive up here. So all of this is part of the movie set. And you can walk around here. It's pretty safe, I think. I haven't been over here before. Yeah, so we we definitely made sure to have these catwalks above the entirety of the set because we need to be able to light every room properly. We need to be able to make sure everything's looking good. We have electricity so we can power everything. And in total, I think we have over eight rooms in this entire set. Yeah. If I remember correctly. Once you're inside of the set, you kind of lose sight of how big the whole build is. So this is part of it. And then over here is the rest of it. Over on that side. Look, Drew. <laughs> yeah, but they didn't get to see it yet. <laughs> we can't go over there from here. But one thing I want to show you is the top-down view of the... Bridge. bridge. Yes. So as soon as we see the top down of the bridge, we'll go down into the bridge. Bridge, one of the coolest parts. So you guys will find this very interesting. I bet just looking at this, you can't guess what's going on. But Kyle, our cinematographer, uh, came into the set throughout the months trying to figure out what's the best way to light the movie because he's done a lot of movies and film stuff. This is actually shower curtains. And so all we do is we set the lights up on these little uh, boom tripod things and the whole inside of the bridge is lit perfectly, which is super, super cool. Looks yeah. really good. And unfortunately, the first time we built the set, we put a roof on it. And then that's when Kyle came in and said, guys, I think we have to take the roof off. So the build guys weren't too happy about that, but it was so much better. <laughs> Yeah, it There's actually, right there. I'm glad we did that because film sets are built and supposed to be built way different than a normal set. It was not me because over the... lighting plays a big role. I just role. fall straight through down into the. Yeah, I was like, did you do that on purpose? No, right? there's a little step here that if you're not looking, it, you fall. And then right behind Drew, you'll kind of see a, a little bit of our green screen because obviously this, this takes place in space. So we had to have an epic green screen to CGI. We're gonna have effects in this movie. Uh, space and <laughs> who knows what else. Effects. 
Hopefully we don't give away any secrets, but if you're watching the podcast, you get to experience it all. <sighs> Do you have any questions yet? Isaac Isaac is here to ask questions. He's basically you. You are him in the podcast. Exactly, because I... Other than seeing the set, I know about as much about the film as you guys do. I was going to ask, how long have you wanted to make a movie like this? Good question. We've been making, well, we went to film school. You knew that, right? Yeah. Yeah. What did you study at film school, Andrew? I got a degree in writing and producing. Oh. And we've made a couple short films in the past, but we've never really done one like entirely from our team hmm. of like a J-Stu production. Yeah. And I didn't get a degree, but I w went to school for acting at oh. the Colorado Film School. Both Andrew and I, when we were living in Denver making videos, we were at the same time going to film school, which was super fun. Uh, but if you guys haven't seen our other films in the past, just, just search up J-Stu short film. We've done three of them. They're all very different and very cool, actually. Yeah. But because we had this giant warehouse, we were thinking, you know what? Every film person would love to have a giant warehouse with unlimited access with any set you could build that's like the dream and i'm like wait a minute we have that we should what? let's make a movie here. and so time time has been going by since our last short film we've always wanted to keep acting and making more movies and so we just finally decided it's time to, to do our first movie our first movie right and there's more on the reason why in a little bit but i think mm. we should go check out the bridge Let's do it. We've already filmed tons of scenes in here. Yes. This was the first part of the set they finished building, so we could we shot all the scenes on the bridge first. But as we look around, I want you guys to notice something. The details that you might not be able to tell just from if we didn't point them out. But things like this chair, for example. Reese built this chair from scratch, installed the lighting in there. You know, we could change the colors if we wanted. Um, <laughs> Nice cool. He added cushions. Like, just look at this. Isn't just a normal chair. The the cuts and angles of it. On top of that, all the chairs over here, he also hand built. This one rotates. This like, one slides back for you to sit in. Incredible. This is actually my seat in the film. Yeah, there's your seat. My seat for the majority is over here, and the switches all work. These are car racing seat belts, I think. We got to be innovative. Our team got to be innovative across the board with the, like, the details in here. Um, all of these on the wall, are these, not, are they styrofoam or? They're or, foam, like insulation foam. Yeah, foam insulation. So just keep in mind or take a guess at how long it probably took just to individually cut these pieces to make them look <laughs> Like space tubes. Space <laughs> tubes. Over here's the transporter. This thing is really cool, too. In the film, we have a smoke machine. So when someone gets transported onto the ship or whatever, there's smoke. There's a smoke effect. You come in here. Yeah, go on in there, Andrew. My name's Andrew. Oh. <laughs> Look at that. Two seats. We've got the color changers. And there's a hidden gem up here. Come take a look. He's always with us. <laughs> Paul Blart. What? Speaking of Paul Blart, this hey. is not Paul Blart. I know I'm not. No, no, you're not Paul Blart. I know. The Stop movie's saying not. I am. I'm not saying you are. <laughs> but if we were going to make a Paul Blart 3, of the people on the team, I would cast to play Paul. Yeah. You make the best Paul. All right. Um, yeah. That's a good thing. I I, that's one of my favorite movies. <laughs> Kevin James is the best. <laughs> But, I mean, that leads to the point, because we did say we were going to make Paul Blart 3, but we're not doing that. Because who knows if we could even have the rights to do that. That's exactly right. Like, we had high hopes. We messaged the director, and I messaged Kevin James on Instagram. Did you really? Yeah. Maybe in the future we might make a spinoff, who knows, of, of Paul Blart, but definitely can't make Paul Blart. I'm blasting you into space, Drew. Activate the teleporter. Oh, you didn't mention this. But this is actually a shower door innovation again. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You'll notice little details like this in the film. This is a Sega Genesis. This was hanging on the wall right here. Um, the lighting across the board, like, how cool is that? Are you kidding me? We got buttons. 
None of the buttons work. They just light up. We got buttons. But they'll look like they work. <clears throat> oh, yeah. We never utilized you, that. You stay in here. I think we used it maybe once, but you stay here. Okay. We have a hidden feature of the ship. Oh. I'll sit right here, and you'll notice. Whoa, the chair almost broke. Oh. You can stick the camera here and get a wide shot, because if you were in this set there, there's no way you'd be able to get back far enough. But yeah. from right here, you can see the whole movie. Mm -hmm. See? Now look in there. You can see a whole lot of what's going on. Actually, I'm really glad that the uh, green screen is so gigantic. This is going to look way too cool on on the movie. I have no idea how it even works, but we're sending the footage to a, a CGI person who's going to insert everything. Whoa. Yeah. And then you just close it up, and nobody knows except for you watching the podcast that this mm -hmm. exists. One. Like we said, the build team is still working, so we are doing this in the middle of their work day. So you're going to hear sounds in the background. Yeah, we don't want to tell them to stop because we're filming again in three days. How come... The whole set was not fully finished before you started filming. Because they didn't finish the set by the time we started filming. <laughs> so, no. so we're here with Samuel, who's been working on this set for a while. Uh, got some questions for you. I'm sure they're all wondering. How long have you been working on this entirety of the project? I think we started the build in September. And so we've been off and on since then. And it is the middle of March right now to give you some context on it. So it's been months. That and we've been working on That's this. been, for the most part, five days a week for yeah. eight plus hours a day, huh? Yeah, something like that. It's a lot so of man hours in here. It is a lot of man hours. Are you proud of your work? Yeah, I, and that was something that I was actually telling my wife about because we had to do a bunch of extra hours on this build too so that we could get it done in time for the movie. Is like, if we had put in all of these months of work and then it turned out being like, meh, I would be pretty disappointed but we kind of pushed the extra miles so that this could end up being a really, really cool set that mm -hmm. all of us would be really proud of. I think you'll be even more proud when you see like the final product because it's just, I, you guys have been working on it, yeah. but you haven't spent much time like watching it or. I know, so disappointed because yeah. we've got other videos too that we need to work on, yeah. right? So I'm really hoping that before filming gets wrapped up, all of us get to spend at least a day watching mm. the whole process, see the dynamics of making a movie versus a YouTube video, and learn. Yeah. How much money has this project costed from a build standpoint? You know, it's kind of crazy to think about, but we've only put a little over $30,000 into the set. And for how much you get out of that, it ends up being a lot. And you don't really think about that because most of the time, like, two by fours, all of that kind of stuff, you're just like, oh, they must be super expensive, but they're really not. And when you do this many square feet of project, you can actually get a lot of it done for pretty cheap. It's the final finishing parts of a house that get really expensive, <laughs> yeah. you know, just getting the shell up and everything. And that, I think that's what's been difficult about this set versus a YouTube set, is most of the time for a YouTube set, it's just gotta be like good enough that it works and is safe. Right? Yeah. And what we're doing is almost a house build quality set where somebody has to be able to live in this, but not only that, the camera has to be able to get really close to the set. And you got to be able to see all of the details, and the lighting is really important, and the dynamics, and how you move through the building, and all of this different kind of stuff. Because if this was a YouTube video, we would have made this room way smaller, for one thing. <laughs> <laughs> so it would have taken less time because it would have been less square footage. But we would have also done a lot of things that were more, I, I call it like guerrilla building, where you're just going through and you're like, get it done, get this here, get that there, and that kind of stuff. But this has been like a lot of edging on the paint, making sure that all the boards work and light up, getting the whole thing wired up for electrical, making sure that we're not overloading our circuits too much, having displays that can actually work. Reese put in all this effort into the chair. It's just so many details that go into that whole project. How many total square feet is the entire spaceship? Well, the warehouse is what? Is it 40 feet by 80 feet? Mm -hmm. And so. the uh, spaceship almost covers that whole area. It's like 3,200 square feet. Right? Yeah, pretty Four big. times eight, with some zeros on it. How does uh, this build compare to our 
all of our YouTube builds. Do you have you enjoyed this more, or do you still like YouTube building more? What do you think? You know, that's a really hard question to answer because there's so many. There's been so many different phases of this project. I'm enjoying this phase a lot personally. I like putting in all of the details. I like seeing it come to life. And so I've really enjoyed this aspect, but when it was just putting up sheet after sheet after sheet after sheet of hardboard, I was like, wow, I am so ready to be done with this. Yeah. So, yeah. And then you just start seeing like hardboard in your dreams. You're like, should we buy 20 more sheets of hardboard when we go back to Home Depot? We're like, surely we won't need that much hardboard. And then you run out of hardboard and you go back and you buy 20 more sheets. And then you're like, surely we won't run out. And then you go back to Home Depot and you buy 20 more sheets of hardboard. So the hardboard has been brutal on this build. <laughs> Yeah. Because <laughs> almost all of this is hardboard. These walls are hardboard. The floor is hardboard. We just put in so much of this material because we were trying to make the walls look really smooth, almost like a metallic mm. um, structure. And so we couldn't do something like plywood. And then it had to be strong enough that if somebody ran into the wall, it wouldn't break. And so. Which we've had several fight scenes. We've had to tell everybody, hey, be careful. <laughs> I heard that this wall got hit yeah. by an ax a bunch of times. Yep. So you can see all that battle damage, but. Yep, thankfully, and surprisingly, no, nothing's broken yet. We still have five There's shoot days left. Yeah, five <laughs> shoot days. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So fingers crossed, <laughs> nothing breaks. Well, thanks for chatting with us about this. We'll let you get back to finalizing whatever you're working on. I appreciate it, appreciate it. <laughs> I personally have a favorite part of the ship. I think that should be the last part which is okay. under the ship. Oh, yes. That's my favorite part. Okay, let's go. Maybe the hallway. We could go around this way to the hallway. Okay. To the hallway. This hallway oh, I uh, really may remind there. you of Star Wars, as it did for me. I feel like I'm in a Star Wars ship when I'm in the hallway. And what other fun? Or Dune. Or oh, Dune. go that way? My which own. is way better than Star Wars. Sorry. Oh, we but, can go this no, way. There's a really important note right here, because look, we just walked out of the bridge into nothing. Oh, yeah. The build guys built this mobile hallway. It connects over here. It can roll over there. And it creates almost like a little, a little L here. So you can walk out and go in the hallway. But that way, when we're shooting the movie and the door's open, you're not just seeing the Plinko board. Yeah. <laughs> that would definitely and it feels, unimmerse you. It feels cohesive. So it yeah. feels like the ship's all one piece. As we go to the hallway, you'll notice the builders have had to be super creative with how they store things. So this is the battery wall. Uh, have to charge a lot of things. They're storing tools here. Uh, it's gotten a little messy, but uh, I remember when they first put it up, it was just like organization, top tierness. <laughs> Proper English there. There's more here, storage on yep, that. Storage for the wall. Some measurements. <laughs> I don't know if the lights are on over here, but that's fine. They did spill a whole bucket of paint right here. <laughs> that's funny. Speaking of mobile units, this is another mobile hallway. So you can, well, I don't want to break it, but it's got wheels. <laughs> so at the beginning, if you guys remember, we went up the stairs. Look what we have here. It's a, a replica set of the stairs we were just on. So you can come here and you can pretend like you're walking down the stairs. And that was where we started. Exactly. So let's come into the hall. Completely different vibe. And the hallway is gigantic. We got lights, little button lights, which can change colors too, which is super fun. We got red here. So again, standard features that we've used throughout the ship uh, on the wall. And then you'll notice we got these on U-line. These are just these like, I don't even know what they're called, but it kind like of- rubber mats. Yeah, it gives that industrial yeah, like spaceship feel. So this is the spaceship door that goes down to the bunker and it locks. That's so cool. Oh, we're locked in here. Uh-oh. But again, like the details on the door Look at all those angles, all the cuts. Each piece had to be individually painted on every door, every wall. It was very tedious work, but I think it'll really shine through the film. Oh, it'll be shining bright like a diamond. Another bonus feature that the builders included were soft open and soft closed doors. <laughs> Look at that. But this is the bathroom. We got a, again, another homemade toilet. <laughs> That's the smallest hole of poop in. Has any of the crew used it? Uh, no, well, yes, but. Yes, in real life? No. The, the film crew, not the spaceship crew. No, no one's used this toilet. This is an inoperable, only looking at toilet. 
then we got the inoperable sink as well. This cool, whatever. It's an infinity, infinity mirror. Look at that, dude. It goes That's on so cool. forever. Okay. Brush your teeth right here. All right, Isaac. What was your next question? <clears throat> so obviously you're still in the middle of filming this video, but do you already have any plans for future films, shows, projects? I would say, okay, simple answer, yes. There's more ideas, but those aren't um, developed yet. Yeah. But this is just the start of something new that we're working on. Okay. So there's definitely going to be more movies, etc. So just stay tuned. You'll get all the oh, updates. That's right. No, let's keep going down the hallway. This is <gasps> fingerboard rail. Whoa, S space boards. This door locks. I don't think it opens. Yeah, I don't think it really goes anywhere. Oh, this is just for aesthetics? Yeah, but it's like it's screwed in, but there's also hinges. Oh. It, it was able to be opened, but I think they were like, well, never mind. Uh, yeah. I think it was swinging open. Oh. That, yes. Yeah. Up here we got uh, PVC pipes, plastic pipes from Home Depot. <laughs> Brilliant. And as you can see, this is a super long hallway. It's like 40 feet, right? You guys feel like you're in Star Wars? I feel like I'm in Star Wars. Uh, this room's, I, we can go in it. It's just a little messy, but. They've seen this room before, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's true. This is actually the first part of the set that was built because we did it overnight in um Capsule. Little capsule hotel, homemade capsule hotel, which was this part of the set. And we've already filmed, I think, all the scenes that need to be filmed in here. Potentially. I'm pretty sure. No, I, there's, I know of one more. Oh, oh, look, there's Blake. But because we have minimal space to work with, that's why kind of things get moved. We got all our beds. Yeah, all the sleeping quarters. This is the sleeping quarters for the crew. And we we filmed a bunch of scenes for the movie last week in here. Oh, yeah. we haven't even told everybody what our character names are. Oh, nuts. What's your character name in the space film, Andrew? <laughs> Wait. I'm Phil. This is my locker. Okay. Uh, yeah, we should show what's in our lockers because I, I don't think... I had my fingerboard in here, but... I took it out because I wanted to play with it. So what what Phil put in his locker? Some Skittles, a beanie, a board game, a little alien guy, some extra clothes. I mean, what else do you need in space? Are those some potential Easter eggs? Spoilers Poten for potential the Easter eggs? No spoilers. <laughs> I like your bottom uh, sticky note. Yeah, Phil was just kind of thinking of some ideas in space. <laughs> Thought. <laughs> you want to see my locker? Yeah. My character's name is Robbie. He's the newest member of the spaceship. So, show you what I got here. Got my checklist. Got this little check pad here. Some just more random stuff. I like this. My favorite superheroes are the Underminer, Zerg, Lord Farquaad, and Scar from The Lion King. You guys will really appreciate this. Glow sticks. That's interesting. Robbie also likes glow sticks? I know, yeah. I don't know if you'll see that in the film, but they are in here, and you guys know about it, okay? <laughs> there is something else in your locker I come to a lot. I'm in this mm -hmm. video, too? No, not that. You Those come to? Oh, you. watermelons. I've been You've been eating my sour watermelon gummies? I've been seeking. Been ah, seeking. no, I've been sneaking them between takes. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. And just like the bridge, this part of the set, there is a movable wall. So when we're shooting this way, you're not just seeing Blake on the table saw. You're seeing that. You're seeing that wall. Yeah, here's a, a a screen grab from the camera from the movie where you can see what Andrew's talking about. We have the camera way out there pointing in here so you can see everything. But if the wall were there, we wouldn't be able to do that. Right. Yeah. Smart movie hacks. Hmm. All right, we're moving on to the captain's quarters because he has a separate room from the crew. And the captain in the movie is actually our very own Alex who is the J. Oh, Stu... Should we call him in here? Yeah, yeah, let's get Alex in here. He is the editor for the J. Stu Studios channel. He's the captain of the film. He actually shaved his head for the movie. Right, here with Alex. Like we were saying, Alex is the captain of the spaceship. Oh, yeah. So we're going to go into the captain quarters and we can interview you. Okay, let's do that. <laughs> this is your personal bedroom, which the My captain spot. gets the biggest space. Oh yeah, you live good. You work as long as I have for the Federation. 
That's what happens. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, obviously you're in the film, but you've done film work in the past, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. What, what's your experience? In uh, I've, I've literally done more short films than I've seen. Like I, I've, I've not, I literally have not seen all, all the short films that I've done. Um, wow. Uh, yeah. I, it's been probably well over 30. Um, some of them just don't get completed because whoever's doing it doesn't finish it. And then others... Uh, we'll just not get released for whatever reason. Um, but hmm. for the most part, I've seen a lot of them. But yeah, I've been acting for like 15 years now. So, yeah. What's really cool is that Alex and I, I think it was it seven years ago or something Dude, like that? something like that, yeah. We yeah. acted in a random, I don't know, it wasn't a short film. What was that? <laughs> it was a short film. It was? Yeah. Okay. It, was like, it was a short Christmas film um, directed by Matt Alvarado, who's also directing this, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it's called Lethal Christmas. That should be up on YouTube somewhere if you guys want to watch that. That's a fun time. Obviously, it's uh, Christmas specific, but and that was before you were working for uh, the channel. Oh yeah, a long time before for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, like Andrew said earlier, we wanted our movie to be like the first J Stu Foley production. So we wanted to include people on the team, and obviously with Alex acting before, it made it was a no brainer to have him a part of the film. Um, right. Yeah, Alex, you love film. Yes, I right? do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I sure hope so. I also did the fight choreo for this, oh, um, so no spoilers, uh, but there's uh, at least one fight scene. Uh, <laughs> yeah. There might be more. Yeah. Um, oh, but, there's more. Okay, yeah. But, uh, I think I have two just myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, there's supposed to be a second one. I wonder if they'll need me to choreograph something for that. Oh, but yeah, um, So there's going to be there's gonna be some fighting. You're going to see these guys throw down like you've never seen them do before. That's right. On the channel, they will wrestle. For that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Alex, how has the film been so far? Even though we're not done shooting yet, what are your thoughts on it? Uh, I think it's great. I think this this set is insane. Uh, seriously, the, the build team, the effort that they've put into this, the detail uh, is incredible. Um, I, I think that that's going to take it above and beyond. And then our camera guy, um, Mr. Kai Hanchet. Uh, I've gotten I've gotten to see some stills and uh, even some really short clips of what we've got so far, and I'm really excited. I think it's going to be a really high end movie. I almost wish that we'd made it like 30 minutes longer so that yeah. we could like really market it to maybe like you know your Netflixes or something like that because I think it's going to be in that quality range um, and it's going to be really fun. So you know it's going to be a blast. Yes, totally agreed. Yeah. Just quick note. You can see this back wall here. Like we were in the other room, this wall is rem removable. So, so that, like, that's the example of like when the, wall, <laughs> when the wall is on, this is sort of what it looks like. So we couldn't have got shots if this mall, <clears throat> mall, if this wall were removable. Um, but Alex, you committed pretty hard to the role. What did you do to your appearance? Yeah. <laughs> well, so funny behind the scenes fact for everybody. This is like our fourth version fourth, yeah. of the script. And I've actually changed characters in each version of the script. <laughs> <laughs> so it started yes. out and I was a really uh, rough, roughneck kind of like character aboard the ship. Um, his name was Torque, I yeah. think. Uh, Torque, yeah. <clears throat> and so I shaved my head. I buzzed it. Um, and then I grew in a big beard. Uh, and I was like, yeah, it's cool. And then, so then we were like, no, we're not going to do that version of the script. We're going to do another one, which is something that happens a lot in Hollywood, mm -hmm. in the industry. Like they go through so many different versions of scripts, guys. It's crazy. Um, but then, uh, so then the second version, I was a different character, but it was like, no, 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 you can, you can keep the look. And then the third version, they were like, no, 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 you're going to be a doctor. And I was like, oh man, so I got to. <laughs> gonna do something to it, um, so I, I I wasn't sure what, and then and then um, and then the, in the final version they were like, no no you're gonna be the captain, so grow your hair in, <laughs> shave <laughs> shave the beard but keep a mustache, <laughs> so I, I I I grew in a mustache and I had that, um, I shaved it off and now it's coming back in again in case we need to do reshoots, um, another mm -hmm. thing that happens a lot, um, but uh, yeah so I, I committed pretty hard to. Uh, the look, and I'm pretty happy with it. I think the mustache will come through pretty strong. It's a pretty big part of my character. Uh, I acted behind the mustache, literally, figuratively. <laughs> the mustache does half the acting for you. That's an acting tip for yeah. you guys out there. Wow. Uh, if you're a bad actor now, just wait till you can grow in facial hair, and then you'll be a good actor. <laughs> it's so hard because Alex and I have a scene where he's yelling at me, and it's so hard. It was hard for me to stay in character because looking at you in your outfit, you look like Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> 
And I just, yeah. I was like, man, this is so hard. I think I have, a, I'll, I'll have Ben throw. Oh, yeah, yeah, we can. Here's, here's the picture. It's up on screen. Yeah, we'll put it up on screen man, for you. It was so funny watching this scene. Because your character it's is actually, funny. I love watching your character. Yeah. It's yeah. so funny, man. Oh, uh, Alex's just, character, he did such a good job. He's sort of a, he's not, he doesn't say much funny stuff, but he's like, a, he's like kind of an important character because he's got a, keep the ship grounded and keep the because every, everyone else is so funny and crazy in the in the story that you kind of need a character to kind of be yeah. mm-hmm. your rock sort of um but your demeanor stereotype. is pretty funny and how you like just are oh thank you yeah stuff, I, mean, I feel like i yelled at everybody I was just, <laughs> yeah. I was like, the whole time i was yelling at you and then i was, yelling at you, <laughs> and I was just that was my whole role <laughs> so yeah I, I'm, I'm hoping it comes across well though i think it's gonna be yeah i think it's gonna be fun there you have it you'll see alex in the film thanks yeah. for being here alex and then also real quick these are fun, fun behind the scenes facts. So these are in my um, are in my quarters here. So this was a film that another film that I did with Matt that he directed, uh, the Red Phantasm. Uh, that's actually me because my character is a com- <laughs> it, it is it's my my character is a comic book character who came to life. Um, so this is the comic book that I my character comes out of. Uh, and then this is a film that I directed, Ella Spectro, that has Matt in it. <laughs> We're just like always yeah. directing in each other's uh, and acting in each other's films. Um, that one, I don't know if I put that on YouTube yet. Um, that was just a big fight scene. That was pretty cool. Uh, and then this one, so I put a little note here that says Dream Girl. Um, that's because this is another film that me, Matt, uh, and uh, this girl, Kim Almason, who's actually my wife, <laughs> uh, all, were all acted in uh, and, again, directed by Matt. <laughs> so uh, we um, uh, we just put some of these fun things in here just that my character could have so you know a little bit about him and what he likes. Um, and he, he apparently likes the stuff that he's acted in in the past <laughs> in, in different universes. Yes. Um and then, yeah, we just put these notes around here. My favorite <laughs> film, that dream. That'll make sense when you see the movie, guys. <laughs> it doesn't just make sense right now. Be great. Yeah, yes. be great. And then desire to perspire instead of desire to inspire because yeah. I like that one we're really funny. Yeah. We're so funny, guys. Funny. We're going to need a bigger ship. That's a, oh, if you, if you know what that is a reference to, comment it right now. We're going to need a bigger ship. What is that a reference to, guys? Alex has a lot of editing to get done. So thank you, Alex. Thank you for being a great captain. He's not here anymore. Yeah. I heard you. That's okay. As we go to the next room, we got this here, which has been super handy because we were able to use one of our walls to put right here to, again, give the illusion that the whole spaceship is a cohesive unit. But wow, another work zone filled with stuff, lots of painting. We just have this wall of paints, spray paints. So we've been utilizing supplies left and right. Well, and by we, I mean the, the builders. But um, uh, Andrew, take him to the next hall. This is the next hallway. And this is where things get interesting because everything we've seen has already been built. Everything over here is still being built. So we've already shot all majority of all the scenes we need in the stuff that's already been built. So move on in. Can you guys see the little uh, pink panther outline still? Mm-hmm. 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 Potentially you might see that in the film. <laughs> <laughs> what other questions do you have, Isaac? The fans are probably wondering about the money aspect of making a short film. So how much money have you put into this so far, including the staff, the cameras, the set. Well, there's money we've already spent and then money we're gonna spend. So just the total movie cost, you guys already heard, the set alone was 30. I think when we're all said and done, we'll probably be between 130 and $150,000. Wow. And that's 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 probably even wrong. If we can think, I'm saying like that's right, but it's probably even more because we're doing a tour Mm. So there's going to be money into like travel. A tour. Oh, I'll tell you about the tour later. <laughs> oh. um, payroll for the months of people building. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So well over six figures. But did we plan on spending that much, Andrew? No. But again, <laughs> I think that's usually how movies go. Of all the behind the scenes movie stuff I've seen, it's always like they're, they're in production and then they call the studio and say, we need eight million more dollars to make the movie. But uh, yeah, I think I wish we had eight million. Dollars. Going into this <laughs> into this movie, we wanted to spend I think around fifty k. Oh wow! And so now we're in the six <laughs> oh, figures. Oh man! So, so you've tripled your budget. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> but we're we're okay with it because we we can see the final vision. Yeah. We can see the final product, mm-hmm. and it's gonna be so worth it. 
Yeah, I really not only believe in this project, but I'm more excited about this project than anything we've ever done. And so... Ever? Wow, that's bold. Yeah, I mean, from the set to the story to the excitement of the entire project and what we're going to be doing with it in the future, it's something I know you guys are going to love watching. And we just can't wait to do more of this type of stuff. So yeah. So we'll talk about the tour in a sec, but let's move on to an unfinished room. All right, so we have this room here. Go on in. Step inside. Whoa, we got a gigantic skylight in this room. I'm excited to shoot in here. This is a really fun room. This is actually the mess hall. So this is where all the food will be and the crew comes to eat and hang out. And this That's one's not, not finished. This one's not finished. So we've got like some random little props, like this little space looking refrigerator thing. And yet again, another handmade table by Reese. Oh, and I mean, there's so many cool things about this set of reused items. So this was actually a custom table Reese made for the 100 hours in a gaming room. Mm. They built this desk for like all those computers mm. and they just put it right in here and painted it. Not much now, but when it's finished, it'll look like the rest of the ship. It'll be insane. And I just think this is pretty cool. Well, it won't just be open. We're gonna cover this uh, in shower curtains. <laughs> shower curtains. Without giving away to any spoilers, Yo. what was the inspiration behind the story of the movie? Great. We had bounced around a few different plots, right? And then I really like space. Space is just such a fun genre. And then we decided to craft a script and a story that's basically a whodunit murder mystery aboard a spaceship. Wow. And of course, our models laugh daily, so there's a lot of comedic elements in this film. But I think going big or going home, we could have just done a normal script that didn't require any sets. But mm. doing space, like Andrew said, we get to build something <clears throat> like this, which is way too cool. And like Alex was saying, this is like Netflix level just production value. Yeah, I mean, because we have this warehouse. And so why not utilize it? We don't have to rent a place to build. Like we can just take our time and build something that we're proud of. And it's like, I think it shows our capabilities doing a uh, sci-fi. Mm -hmm. Like what, yeah. what we can Sci-fi is cool. That is a hard genre for like not being Hollywood budget. It's hard because I think people look at sci-fi as like, oh, we have to get these um, shots from outside of a ship or like floating in space and CGI and stuff but it's like we're able to pull it off in just like entirely in a spaceship there's a few other scenes but 95% of it's on our set yep the security slash android room yes there are androids in this movie and yes this room is not finished and yes they're real androids and we built them Reese is actually working on the Android chair, which he homemade. Reese, mm -hmm. how many homemade items have you built on this <laughs> set, and why did you choose to do all these homemade things? Um, just, you know, so they had that more spaceship-type feel because, you know, things that you buy at a store just don't feel like a spaceship. That things made out of plywood and two-by-fours look like they came from space. <laughs> <laughs> How have you felt about working on this set, and uh, are you excited about the outcome? Yeah, I, this has been a, a blast. It's been a lot of fun. It's uh, a long time coming, so I'm very excited to see the film and uh, see what it's about. I have no idea. <laughs> Which is crazy. Do you, yeah. do you prefer it that way, or do you wish you knew all about it? Yeah, no, it's, it's kind of fun being in the dark about it. Oh, well, and... Go ahead, Andrew. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, because we've rewritten the script like four or five times. I remember you were, you were telling me that you read like the first and second version, and then you're like, I don't have time to <laughs> yeah, get keep fully, reading. We're under the wire now. Yeah, fully <laughs> into the script. So, yeah. I, I used to know what it was about, and now I'm like, eh, we'll see what happens, I guess, at the premiere. It's still on a spaceship. What's interesting about what Reese just said, he has no idea what the movie's about, but he's in the movie. Oh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Your I, first ever debut acting role? I, it is. Yeah. I, I think I'm the hero of the story. I'm pretty sure. So It was very heroic. Yeah. What you were doing. Yeah. I, th I think I'm the main character. I literally love your character and I need an action figure of him. 
You'll see in the movie Reese. I'll have to make one. <laughs> we were making like jokes about it, but he's like this. I don't want to tell you who he is, but he he goes with this Italian vibe. Did you choose? Italian? I thought it was French. Oh, maybe it's French. What what was your reasoning behind your acting decisions? Uh, I, I was told to make it sound French. Ah, oh. so it wasn't your decision. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I had very little to do with my character, but, you know. Yeah. I was there. Yeah. I know you're still working on this. Are you able to yeah. test it? Yeah. Okay, let me put this one screw in. Okay. So, guys, as you're watching, when the movie comes out and you're watching it, throughout the movie, you'll just notice that there are so many handmade things, including this Whoa. chair that Reese and the team have put together, which is phenomenal. Is this itself? part of a desk, Reese? Yeah, so this is a... One of those adjustable desks, standing desks, and I just took the top off of it. And then we also have some hardware from our hidden bed gaming room to, <laughs> that's on here. Um, yeah, and then, and then we lift it up, and then the arms, hopefully, if I did it right, will fold out open. So watch yourself, Andrew. Okay. We'll get a wide shot of this, Drew. The arms will open here. At least the right one will. Oh, the left okay. one, I need to oh, oh, oh. calibrate. Oh, yeah. Oh. That was close. <laughs> yeah. This, this, this one I just put together, so I need to calibrate it still. But ah, makes that's sense. the idea is once it gets opened, it'll... How? That's insane. How are you so creative in coming up with these ideas? I can never do any of this, and I'm always blown away by these random things you build. Uh, it's genetic. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. You either got the gene or you don't. Yeah. I came to work one day. It was we were close to Halloween, and it was after work actually. And Reese is in here just randomly building a sword, and it was like this sword from Zelda. It looked exactly like the sword. It was just insane. So, guys, leave a like for Reese, Samuel Jackson, and Blake. Mostly Blake. Mostly Blake. Blake is the legend. All right, so we're coming this way. And like we said, this movable hallway. So this would move right here, and this would technically connect to the bridge. If you're tracking with me, what I'm saying. I have another question. Great, hit us. Apart from yourself, who is your favorite character in the film and why? Apart from yourself. That's good. Dang. I know who mine is. Okay, and you go first. He's uh, not here. Obviously, his name, his character name is Nedry. Um, it's played by Destan. Um, you'll see him in the movie. Here's a picture of him. You'll see why in the film, why he's my favorite. <laughs> I think, yeah, it, was, it would be a tie between Nedry and I like Alex's character as the captain. Like you were saying, he's just very like rooted and I don't know, so good. Now it is time we move on to my favorite part of the ship, which is Blake. actually under... The ship. And Blake and Jackson have been the ones, I think mainly Blake, I'm not sure. Uh, Blake actually recently stayed two days. We, we, we just had a giant blizzard. Blake slept here to work on finishing Whoa. under the ship. So, I mean, way too cool. Blake, how have you felt building the ship and what you've been working on? It's been going good. Yeah. yeah. Has first started... Uh, I shot Samuel with a nail gun, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that was Ball. an accident. <laughs> Ship into, yeah. Into had to, yeah. Take him to the hospital and I had to watch all that. That was my first experience with the making the ship. <laughs> so what's been your role on the whole building process of the ship? What have you uh, spent your most time doing? A lot of this in the underbelly, uh, framing up the walls and putting up the paneling and stuff. So. And electric, right? Electric, yeah. yeah, in uh, this room, yeah. for sure. Yeah, I haven't really touched any part of the bridge at all. Oh, really? But, yeah. I don't even think I did anything in there except like a little bit of paint, like a little, little touch, a little touch of up. paint. Dang. That's cool that you guys have like almost like your different zones of what you're working yeah. on. You can kind of see like our different styles. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. And That's the creativity cool. that Blake put into the underbelly <clears throat> of the ship is so cool. There's so much unique, like, just cool stuff. So let's. Let's go check it out. This is another this is another area that we've used in a video. And I actually haven't been in there oh, since yeah. we did that. Did you tell him that I had a role in the movie too that we cut out? Oh, yeah. oh no. <laughs> oh yeah, Blake was a character in version 2. Uh, what, was it, what was my name? 
Knock, knock. Knock, knock, and all I did was fart sounds. Yeah, so it would have been an easy roll for Blake, just fart sounds, but <laughs> then we cut the character. I, that, might be too, that might be hard, though. No. Come, give give us an like, example. So it's like your, your line was just... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Drew, yeah, I did your reading for it. Yeah, I know. What'd you do? Yeah. yeah there's no way. Just kind of like an alien. Don't so get like, annoying though. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I mean, we thought about it. Get annoying. Uh, I mean, it worked out for the Blake. better. Unless you like. But like, you do have a locker though. We put knock knock on the one of the lockers. Yeah, I thought I saw that, but I didn't know. Yeah. yeah. That was in memory of the fallen character who got Maybe cut. Part two. Maybe part exactly. two. Exactly. Exactly. Mm. Space Man Part Two, alternate Can you universe. Nope. Oh, we're not telling anybody about Isaac's role yet. <laughs> I, I guess you have to see the film to find out. Okay. All right, we are going into. Is this the last room? Yes, this is the last room of the spaceship. But before we go in, we should talk about the tour. Oh, that's a great idea, Andrew. So, like Isaac asked earlier, what was the inspiration for making the film? This is part two of that answer. We have had this idea of going on tour for a long time. And there's a lot of YouTubers that go on tour, but we wanted to do it differently. Yeah, if you guys remember, and have been watching for a while, about two years ago, we did our first ever live tour. It was just show. A, a, yeah, maybe not tour, yeah, you're right, it was a show. It was a two hour event where we invited you guys out and we just did a bunch of fun stuff on a stage and it turned out great, you guys loved it. And we're like, oh, we could do that again, but we actually want to do something different. And with Andrew and I loving film and movies so much, we thought the best <coughs> next, or we thought the best next thing were to, whoa, The next English. best thing. The next best thing. You could cut all that. <laughs> nope. <laughs> this yeah. is a behind the scenes. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> we, we make mess ups a lot in videos and we get to cut them. <laughs> But some of them we keep them in because they're funny. Yeah. Um, the next best thing were to... Uh, you just say <laughs> yes. it. Forget it. I've, I've thought too much about That's it fine. now. The next best thing uh, is to make a movie tour. So we're making yeah. this movie, and we're going to go on tour, releasing it in different theaters. Well, that kind of doesn't make sense. More like premiering it in different theaters, and you guys, we're going to invite you all out. You buy a ticket. We'll go... Bop. You buy a ticket, we're going to watch the movie. It's going to be a longer event, not just the movie, but more like a two-hour yeah. thingamajig. So you're getting more out of it than just the movie. But we're picking specific cities you want to go to, and hopefully this will be end of summer time frame. Yeah, so if you guys are in school, hopefully you'll, you'll be on summer break. The, the plan is to do the tour in August. And uh, we're going to be going to a few states. Like you said, we, we put out a form that you guys could have voted on, and... We have pretty much our top five states that you guys live in. Um, but we'll be announcing the details of that soon, so just stay tuned. We'll obviously tell you guys on the podcast about it. But it's Yeah, gonna it's going to be a big deal once we have the details set for buying tickets. So be on the lookout for that. So in this spaceship, down that long hallway, that door we came in, that's where this would come down the stairs. This in, is where all the, the film. mechanicals are. This is how the ship is able to fly through the galaxy. Okay, so we'll just notice the details across the board. Different color materials and lights. Look at this. Exposed wires. Yeah, very up to code. So... In theory, you're aboard this spaceship, you're a crew member, you would come down here to do engineering work or maybe an engineer would work down here to fly the ship and keep the engines running. I really like this feature, uh, point out to you guys. This is a bird and rodent guard. It says check periodically and remove lint or other debris if present. That's just so random and so fun. I don't even know where most of these things have come from like this i don't know what that is but it looks like it just fits with down here <laughs> this actually moved this was at 60 when we first got in here this morning really yeah uh oh oh no is it connected to something the pressure's going down maybe look at this was this from the uh furnace we bought oops the hidden, oops. The hidden, the hidden the furnace, furnace. Yeah. oh the hidden game does this like fold up or will it fall off it's oh. not even on tash actually you oh. can take it off Okay, go ahead. What's in there? Oh, <gasps> nothing. Ah, nothing. Something. Doesn't need to be anything in there. We're yeah. not opening that. 
Oh, and we are here with Jackson. Jackson, what has been your role on this project for the most part? Oh my gosh. Uh, I've spent months in the bridge. I have spent months in the hallways and probably like the last couple weeks I've been in the basement with Blake. <laughs> Jackson, <laughs> Jackson would fun. come into the house during lunch and he's just covered in sawdust. And <laughs> yeah. You cut a lot of boards, didn't you? I cut foam for like a month straight. And then I painted foam for like a month straight. So you're f- foamed and cut it out. Yeah, I don't want to touch it that ever hard to, again. Hard to cut because it like melts as you're cutting it. Oh. And like it makes it hard. Really? Yeah. So aside from the tedious work you've done, what's been the, the your favorite part of the spaceship? Uh, when we took a break to build the bunker. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, dude, we that'll tell you just how long we've been working on it. The bunker. That was the best part of the Whoa. spaceship. You were building the spaceship while we when we filmed the bunker video. Yes. We, 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 wow. We posted the pod room in like October. Oh yeah. man. So yeah. that means we built it like a month or two previous. Like, like August. Dude, that's crazy. Yeah. So the last we we've talked about this a few times. The last big build that we did before the spaceship was the treehouse, the mega treehouse. Oh, what the village? Oh, yeah. yeah. That was the last actual significant build that we did before this. This is how long so it's long been. Ago. Time is flying by. Or crazy. not flying by. No. <laughs> <laughs> we started on the spaceship like right after that, basically, like yeah, put up the walls. Which I'm glad we did, though, because we didn't have the script finalized or even fully written yet. But, like, we know it's going to be on a spaceship, so we need to get the build going. Originally, we were like, oh, we're going to have the spaceship done by November. Oh, oh November? my gosh. The end of November. Jeez. We were like, November. During Thanksgiving, yeah. <laughs> we were like, oh. That was way off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I know the answer, but do you guys, another Easter egg, do you know what Star Wars vehicle... These are from <laughs> from the actual set of the real Star Wars Return of the Jedi. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Made by Reese. <laughs> yeah, Reese. Another, <laughs> Reese was another there. thing that Reese just built. <laughs> Reese was there. We didn't actually build that for this movie, but we have yeah. utilized it for the movie. <laughs> yes, we have. <laughs> you can give him a hint. It's complimentary to the build that he made in the Treehouse video. Oh, it's yeah. also from Star Wars. Yeah, ah, yes, it is. Yeah. Man, we're getting deep into the J-Stu lore now. Hey, the, the podcast, if you made it this far, you already know everything about J-Stu. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're the 21 pilots of YouTube. And as we keep progressing, um, just look at the, the details of this. At first, it looks like, okay, it's just a part of the underbelly, but this is actually a dishwasher piece. <laughs> oh. A rack in the dishwasher. Oh, yeah. Isn't that a fun? Rackus. There's a more Arrakis over there. Oh. Yep, there's the, the, the top layer of the dishwasher rack. <laughs> Speaking of Arrakis, in terms of success of the movie, box office sales, how do you think it'll compare to Dune 2? Oh, man. <laughs> if we had it in theaters, it'd be like 1% of Dune sales. <laughs> I would love that. Because it get like, over a good. billion. So a billion? One, yeah, 1% of a billion is pretty good. Is that... I haven't checked. Million. It might not be at a billion. Awesome. That's one million. It was definitely at five hundred million last time I looked. Oh my goodness! Yeah, maybe one day, maybe one of our films. I'll take one percent of Dune sales. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Again, just just kind of wanted to show you guys just the random pieces that are in here. I'm not sure what that's from. Yeah, what is that? Like, what is this? What uh, is that piece from? I think it's part of a dishwasher. <laughs> like, like all, everything down here is part of a dishwasher. <laughs> Getting crafty with the right? dishwasher. That's part of a fan. <laughs> really it's classic yeah but it looks cool it looks grunge it's kind of like it's a good part the vibe down here is oh yeah okay. it's kind of like steampunk vibe-ish yeah the, the nice part about building this area too is you can leave things kind of like unfinished not everything has to be polished off mm, yeah. right can it's you like give any gritty. industrial fill can you give any hints as to what kind of scenes will be down here oh there's a big don't pull the lever no <laughs> Actually, I think, is that the one I pull? I don't know. But we haven't shot anything down here, obviously, because it's not done yet. But there's, yeah, there's, a, I think, a pretty high climax of the film down here. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So it's a very important part. Yeah, I want to talk all about it, but. Right. Can't spoil oh, it too much. Yeah. I love the different lights. We got red. We got purple, green, orange, blue. I think that's why I just love this area so much. It's so colorful. What the heck is this? 
Again, more oh. just utilization of pipes and you just spray paint them. They look metallic. Wait, more Star Wars vehicles. The grunge. Oh, you know what Star Wars vehicle these are from? Isn't it the same I one? I think these are from the Star Wars vehicle, yeah. Oh, I thought, oh, I thought you were going to say the AT-AT. Pipes. They're just uh, props from this. From the Reese's, same one, right? Reese's Star Wars spaceship. Yeah. More spaceship parts from Star Wars. <laughs> this might give it away to what vehicle it's from. Maybe. It might have been in some of the behind shots of some uh, YouTube videos as well, just mm. sitting in the warehouse. You might have seen it. You have any more questions, Isaac? Since our whole fan base doesn't watch the podcast, is there any secret Easter eggs you want to tell those who are loyal enough to watch the podcast? Mm -hmm. So some special insider information. I don't really think there's any like Easter eggs other than like some things like in the locker that's like the, the, the dough bear or... You know, some merch. <laughs> like in the movie, I don't really think we have Easter eggs like like what you're thinking. Yeah. Is there any last What's things you wanted to say to the loyal fans who watch the podcast about the short film? Well, like we said at the beginning, it's actually not short. Oh. It's going to be about an hour long. Yeah, yeah. I know a lot of people were asking that question. That's good. Yeah, so it's going to be a fun adventure, safe for the whole family to enjoy and mm -hmm. laugh at. There's going to be a lot of twists and turns along the way. It's going to be high-paced, high-energy, fun action. I think this movie has the best of everything in it. Okay, like, wow. It's, mm -hmm. it's really good. Now I want good. to watch it. It's yeah. really good. Uh, so like Andrew mentioned, we're wrapping up filming this month. And then it goes into editing and production, sound, music, all the all the things. So it's a, wow. still a big yeah. process. Last so time. it should be done, I th think, around June. And then, yeah, end of July, early August is when the tour is going to be. We're for sure going to Texas. So mm. probably Dallas. They're like our number one city. So that's a for sure going to happen. But so. the other ones are still up in the air. Mm. So if you haven't filled out the form yet... Uh, if you go to our JSTU YouTube channel and go to the community tab, we, we put a document you can fill out and vote. Tell your friends to vote. We might come to your state. That's crazy. But other than that, we hope to see you on the tour. And if you can't make it to the tour, we hope you uh, purchase the movie because we spent a lot of time and money on it and uh, we know you're going to love it. So mm -hmm. stay tuned for more behind the scenes coming soon. The trailer will be dropping soon, so stay tuned and we'll see you on the next podcast. Ow. This is a real spaceship. Bye. <laughs>